So my name is Sabrina. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm your instructor for tonight. Um, I am going to be teaching you this wonderful painting here. If you need to see it a little bit better, let's take slides, look on your screen and find Sipping and Painting um, Square, and they will have a uh, picture up of what is your painting as well that might be a little easier to see. There's also one on the website. Um, but I will be teaching this tonight. If you want to uh, do something a little different, go ahead. Creativity is welcome here um, in the studio and in the virtual studio, and we are glad to see whatever work you have to offer. So um, we'll feel fully free to experience your best artist life tonight. Um, I am going to introduce you to a few of my materials. You may or may not have all the same materials as me. Um, don't worry if you don't, um, but I'm going to go through what we have at the studio, which is um, hopefully if you got a kit, what you will have at home. So um, I'm going to start with my brushes. These are my brushes. I've got my, um, this is going in order here. Um, I've got my small brush, which I call small because it is small. <laughs> um, I've got my extra small brush, which I call extra small because extra small. Um, I got my medium brush which is medium size. Um, that's a flat brush. Um, and I've got my uh, large brush, which is large. So hopefully you have some version of all of these brushes. Um, and uh, use whatever you have. We're going to paint um, with the, these primary colors I've got here on a plate. I'm just using a paper plate um, for my palette. Um, I've got my white. I've got blue. I have red, black, and yellow. Um, and those we're going to mix into whatever colors that we need um, to make this wonderful piece tonight. Additionally, I like to have a rag or napkins or a paper towel next to me um, to blot my brushes on um, after I pull them out of my water. So I always keep one or two water jars um, because acrylic paint is water soluble and so I it is important to have water with you when you're using acrylic paint or watercolors if you're doing that um, so that you can um, add water to your paint. Additionally one of the things that you are going to need for this uh, for tonight's painting that you might not have um, don't worry if you don't um, you can find something similar um, is a, basically a circle. Um, these are all templates so they will match the size of the moon, and they're going to help us out a little bit later. If you want to go and look for something like that, you can go ahead and look for it. Um, if you don't have something like that, don't worry about it. Um, we will just draw a circle, which I'm confident that you can all do very well. Um, all right, I think that's all of our materials. Make sure you have an apron um, covering your clothes and something covering your surfaces. Um, very important. Um, and make sure that you have a drink. Uh, I like to keep my water next to me, maybe a snack, something to get you in the sitting and painting mood. All right, what do you say we get started? All good. All right, so I'm going to teach this class as I would normally, um, which means that I'm going to go through all of the steps as I do them. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, as you can virtually, or you can send it in the chat, and my assistant, Thea, who is uh, certainly able to use the chat box, will be able to respond to you and answer any questions. Thea is also a professional artist. In fact, Thea is a professional artist at Train B, so um, you're in good hands with her. Um, so, what do you say we get started? I'm going to start with my big brush. I'm going to dip it in the water. And just give you guys an idea of how this feels, why don't we just wet our canvas down a little bit. Um, I'm going to go in circular motion because it's the motion that I'm going to be using very shortly when we actually add colors to our canvas. Um, and we're just going to kind of get some water on there, learn the feeling of the brush, um, get to get used to our tools, right? Um, with every new uh, art, art type, Every new art genre that I, I work with, there is always a part of, of it that is just learning the tools. I'm in college for uh, theater, and one of the things that I got to learn this year was how to build sets. So we had to learn all about the drills and the, and the scary saws and everything that can probably harm you in the wood shop. So luckily for you, all of these are non-lethal. All right, so now that 
that we've gotten used to our our uh, our brushes and our canvas and everything else, um, why don't we put some color on? I am going to be starting with a little bit of my blue. I'm going to pull that into an empty spot on my palette, just that blue. I have a little bit of water left on my brush, but not a lot. And then I'm going to pull in some of that some white right next to it and kind of mix those together. You see that? And then I want this to be a little bit more blue, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And let's start on the background. So like I said, um, I started you off with that circle maneuver because that's going to help us with the texture of our background that we want right now. Feel free to get more paint when you need it um, as we fill in this background in circular strokes leading to a center point right in the middle. As you can see, I'm kind of going from edge to edge, um, corner to corner, um, letting it lead darker colors into lighter colors. Um, so I'm mixing more white when I get close to the center and leaving more blue when I get close to the outside. And I'm just going in a circle. Spreading it out. Now, if you need to add more paint, you can add more paint. If you need to add more water, go ahead and add more water. Keep those brush strokes um, really circular, curved. And we're just covering every inch of the canvas, and that includes the outside. So when I, when I do a background, I like to cover the edges of my canvas, which is what we call a gallery wrap. This is something we do in the studio because then you don't need to buy a frame which we all know is a very unnecessary expense right about now. So make sure you go over your edges. You won't have to buy a frame. All right, so now I've got color on my edges. Um, so I'm going to pull out from this edge and continue that circular motion, um, covering my entire canvas with blue and white. Leaving darker blue um, closer to the corners and lighter blue closer to the center. I'm just keeping my brush going in long circular motions. I'm using my, my large brush, but if you want to use your medium brush, you can go for that um, instead. There you go, I'm adding some white as I'm coming closer. It doesn't matter if they're, if your brush strokes end and run into each other, that's just called texture, we like that. Um, and we're just going to keep it in circular motions to make really fun um, background texture. So I, as you can see, I didn't start from the center. I left the space in the center. So I'm going to leave a large space in the center. Um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and then I'm just going to make sure I'm using my white and my blue. Um, and I'm going to line up the color to that edge that I've just made um, and not go too far past it. Try and make that kind of a barrier for your paint. Um, Cause we're gonna come back and draw the moon in there in a minute um, when we're ready. So I'm just making this a light surrounding sky. Um, just finishing filling in that background. Um, and then we will uh, draw our circle for our moon and, and go in with the rest of the piece. So if you're like me, I left, I left this circle at the top part of the center of my canvas. If it's exactly in center, don't worry, that works too. Um, but if you leave, if you divide the canvas into thirds, this is closer to the top third. 
again, I'm coming in with my light blue and my uh, blue mixed with white um, and a little bit of water to help it spread. Um, and I'm creating this uh, circular motion, um, filling in the space around the space I've left. Um, and whenever I get to a corner, I add darker blue um, and go over my edges as I create the rest of the circle. Getting close to being done with my uh, background on my canvas. You may or may not be in the same place. If you are, that's great. If you're not, that's fine. I'll be taking my time. If you fall behind, don't worry. Feel free to reach out and ask some questions in the chat. Um, it's always appreciated to hear from you guys. I'm making sure to fill in any uh, white space on my canvas. And in order to do that, I'm adding a little bit more paint and some water to my brush and really um, brushing at those spots. As you can see, really just getting in there with the paint, making sure it uh, stays together. So here we go, we've got one. Oop, oop, got a little bit of black on my brush. I don't know where that came from. Um, let's uh, wipe some more color on there. And you can see, look, I can make it disappear. Benefit of acrylic paint. Here's some, we're going to add some more white and blue together. Let's pull this color down. As you can see, this is really good color around here, but a little outside, I've got some lighter spots that I'm going to go in with a little bit more paint um, and darken those up. There we go. Again, keeping that circular motion. Um, all revolving around this space that we've left for the moon that we'll come back to in a minute. Almost there. Making sure my corners are dark and they bleed out into the rest of the canvas. Uh, fade together. Create a gradient of color, as we'll say. Again, I'm here I'm putting dark, dark blue around the corners and the edges. Adding a little bit of water where I feel my brush getting stuck, um, and a little bit more paint every once in a while. Um, Coming to a stopping point at a different time. Um, if you're like me, um, you might have to go over your edges to make sure that you've got all of them. As you can see, I'm missing my top, bottom, and side edges. So I'm going to spend some time, um, make sure that color bleeds all the way out off of my canvas um, so that it fades into the, into the experience of the art piece later when I'm done with it. Um, and I'm keeping that those darker the darker blue right at the edges in the corner of my canvas. So when I do the edges of my canvas, my technique is to just pull the brush directly down to the side. That helps you to know. Okay. Right, let's do the other side. So pulling down from the edge of the canvas. Little flicks, short flicks. Make sure you don't get yourself. Make sure you're wearing an apron so that if you do get yourself, you'll get some aprons or whatever paint clothes you have. So 
some of the things I'd like to tell you about that we have going on at the studio while we're painting. Um, no matter where you are, um, we have plenty of opportunities for you to come and paint with us. Not necessarily in the studio, sometimes in the comfort of your own home, as you're experiencing right now. Um, we have our virtual sipping and painting classes, which are happening, um, oh, I think, well, we are teaching Thursdays and Tuesdays, but I think we've got a lot of classes on the schedule. And you can check that schedule on our website um, at Sipping and Painting Canton. Um, if you look us up, you can find our website, check out the calendar, and sign up for another virtual sipping and painting class. Additionally, we do actually have in-person classes in the studio. So if you and your friends want to come by, we're limiting our group to under 10. Um, and we're making sure to be extra safe about everything. Doors will be open. Um, we won't be uh, functioning the way that we were, but we will be teaching you how to paint and letting you have a good time, um, which is something we all need. So feel free to check the schedule out, maybe sign up for one of those classes. We are also doing a whole uh, bunch of other things. For example, um, we have uh, retail hours that Nancy is holding. Um, she's there every day between around noon and three, I think. You can check that again on our calendar on our website um, to double check me. Um, and if you go in during the retail hours, there's a few things you, you can find. I'm done with my background. I'm going to let it dry, which is a very important step, letting it dry. As you can see, I've left a big space right in the center. We'll get to that in a moment. Don't worry. It won't just be white. Um, but we're going to, we're going to let it dry for now and we're going to come back and, um, play with it later. Um, right now I'm just going to tell you a few things while you're waiting for yours to dry. So in the studio, during retail hours, we have a few things. We have these wonderful, um, sipping and painting masks. So you can go and rep for us. We also have really fun, playful ones like this, which are, um, hand colored masks that we've been making. Um, Nancy's been working on those and she'll be selling them in the shop, so you're more than welcome to come and check those out um, and pick one up. You can also buy a copy of the painting that we are doing at whatever class because all of the um, teachers, we each paint one, and every time we paint one, it goes onto the back table. And in the shop, if you go during retail hours, you can purchase one yourself. Um, so that's really fun. Um, and we, we, we love if you do come by, make sure you bring a picture or, or your, your painting and we can see how it turned out. Additionally, if you do want to um, uh, come in for a painting or virtual painting, class, then make sure you come by and pick up a painting kit. I don't know if you guys picked up painting kits, but if you did, um, then you know how it works. We have kids kits and adult kits um, for painting, um, and a lot of them go with virtual sitting and painting classes that we're hosting here. Additionally, everything that we paint on a uh, virtual studio will be going online to YouTube, and we're going to get YouTube famous with your help, so make sure you check out those videos. They're up 24 hours later. Additionally, um, just so you guys know, if you want to play music, that's fine and great, but just make sure that you're muted because uh, we can't use anything that has music in it, so just keep that in mind. Unfortunately, that's why I can't play music either. Oh, well. Don't worry. My best friend just got me into metal, though, so you probably wouldn't like any of it. <laughs> Not really the mood. So I'm, I'm um, finagling with my painting. I'm adding dark blue in my corners because I, I would like it to really look like a night sky and that dark blue really fades it out into that night sky, that sort of ethereal uh, vignette. All right, so if, you're, if your paint is dry, um, you can either let me know in the in the chat or we'll just move on. Um, if you're not with if you're not with me at the same point, don't worry. Um, you will catch up and we will 
um, work it out and it, it is all, you know, just for you guys. So you guys are our prime um, customers today. You're the only ones with us. So you get you get to um, work this however you like. So let me know if you need me to slow down and I'll slow down. Or if I need to speed up, I can speed up too, though that is never what my mom tells me. So, you know, uh, sorry. Speed up. Alrighty, what do we say we get started on our next next step? Okay, so I have my paintbrush that is covered in paint, and I'm going to wash it off entirely in the water, spin it around in my water jar, make sure that there's no paint on it, um, take it and blot it on my paper towel um, to make sure that I got the water and paint off. And then if you're painting with any, um, I like to leave my, my brushes in the water jar while I'm painting because acrylic paint dries hard and if you have paint on your brush and it dries and then you can't get it out and then you've lost the brush. So make sure you put your brushes in the water jar when you're done using it, whenever you're using it, and um, that will help with the lifespan of your brushes. Additionally, um, if you make you make sure to get all of the color out that really helps. So um, I'm going to show you how to do this next step. Um, but don't worry if you're in a different place than me. We will all end up in the same spot. One of my circle templates that I showed you at the beginning. You can do it because. All right. What do we say? We um we make a toast while we're we're waiting for paint to dry, which is always the most fun part and literally um a part of sipping and painting. So while you know, and if you want to make sure that your paint is dry, there are, there are several ways to test that. I'll get that to that in a minute. But in the meantime, let's have a toast. This is my um very elegant water bottle. Um, a toast to good health and happiness for all. Something we very much need in these times. However, if you're celebrating anything specific, um, please let me know. We'll, we'll do it specifically for you and the wonderful family that you guys have. Alrighty, if you see the perfectionist in me is similar to the perfectionist in you, you might be adding some more um, colors like I am. I'm really enjoying this, so I'm gonna I'm going to make sure that I put my brush down. That is always the hardest part. Make sure it, it gets time to dry. I'm gonna move on to the next step. If you're in a different place, don't worry, you're getting really close. So make sure that you've left a spot in the center of your painting. Um, and whatever template you want to use for your moon, um, get that ready. We're using, I'm using a cap. You can use uh, the cap to a water jar, like a, a mason jar. Um, or you can just use a paper plate. You can use 
oh, I don't know, uh, cut out cardboard piece, whatever you want. Um, but I find cats to be really useful. Um, so use whatever you have. And I'm going to take the cat. Um, and we're going to, first you want to make sure that it's the, the right size to fit in the center of your canvas because you've just painted um, up to that point. So mine is perfectly fit, which is really good. Um, and I am going to take my smallest brush now. Um, actually, not my smallest brush, my mostly small brush. Um, and I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to put some white on it. Here, I'll show you. You can do this with blue too if you want. I prefer to do it with white and a little bit of yellow. Start that moon color now. But if you want to outline with blue and then work your way up to the blue line with the yellow and white of the moon, you can do that. I find that a little more difficult. So I'm going to take my yellow and white that I've just mixed. It's important to mix the yellow and the white together because the yellow is a really um, uh, translucent pigment and it needs uh, white to help it along. So I'm and going to moon would look like cheese. And the moon would look like cheese. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I'm going to take my um, circle template and I'm going to place it in the center top center where I've left my uh, space open of my canvas um, and make sure that it's situated where you want it and then you're going to take that, that small brush with a little bit of yellow and white and you're just going to keep your brush against that very edge of the uh, cap or whatever you're using for a template and you're going to literally just draw around it as close to you can, as you can to the edge keeping your brush at the same pressure, you want to make sure you're pressing, pressing down the same amount so that you don't get a wiggly line. Just try and keep that line as um, straight and together as you can as you go around this template. So I've got, I went around the top and I'm going around the bottom, making sure that I connect all of my lines. It looks like a circle so that when I pull it off, it will be exactly the shape I need. What do you think? Are you ready to see? Oh, there we go. There's a shape. As you can see, the yellow and white is really light. So if it, if there's any spot where um, there is blue that went over, it'll probably look a little green. That's okay. When it dries, we can go over and fix that. Here I see that I have a little bit of space left between my moon and my sky. So I'm taking my little brush. I made sure to wash it off very carefully in the water. And I am um, adding a little bit of paint there, a blue paint, to uh, make the sky uh, disappear behind the moon. Oops. I'm just texturing with my large brush, but you probably don't need to do that, um, just to make sure that it fits in. All right, making sure I wash off any other colors um, that are on my uh, brushes before I go in for my next step. So if you have a different size or shape template, don't worry, your moon can be whatever kind of moon you want. Maybe it's not even on Earth. Who knows? Could be a moon on uh, Tatooine, right? What, two moons? Is that right? Now add some texture, make sure that this looks really clean. Making sure not to go over the edge so that my moon still looks circular. But there you go, got it cleaned up. Very good. So the colors that we have used so far are blue and white, and we are now moving on to yellow and white. If you have other, like orange you want to include in your moon, you can have a really cheesy moon. Make balls and grommets very happy. <laughs> so I'm going to take my medium sized brush now. Like that. There it is. I'm going to take my medium sized brush, and I'm going to fill in our little circle that we've got. That's my next step. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. I'm going to mix them together. Um, you want to make sure that you're adding your pigment to your white. However, with yellow, you're going to need a lot of white to make it um, work. So um, the white and the yellow together. And I'm just going to start filling in with little circular strokes, just like little spirals, filling in the center of my moon. And I'm only going to that edge that we got 
to with our template. Not any further because I don't want green. Green moon, that, that's a little odd. But if you want a green moon, go for it. You have green cheese moon. You have a blue cheese moon. Oh, well, blue might be a little hard with the blue background. But, you know, red cheese. Is there a red cheese? Um, I'm making sure to go right up against the edge of my template line, uh, making those strokes super smooth around the edge, and then keeping them in little spiral circles um, in inside my moon right here. And uh, the spirals is a texture that we want to get so that the moon looks like it has little pockets, and we'll start adding a little bit of color, make that really come through. There we go, got some shadow. Hmm. All right, I've got, I filled in my, my moon with a lot of yellow. Um, with my medium-sized brush. If you want to use a small brush, you can do that too. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to add some white to my brush, and I'm going to go in with as more white than yellow on my brush, and I'm going to create a little uh, highlight slash ring. So the way that a moon works, when you look at the moon, it looks like a sphere, right? So the way that we're going to make this look like a 3D object is we're going to add some highlights and some shadows to it. So our highlight is going to go on the top of the moon. Uh, I'm making it to the left side of my moon, and I'm using mostly white and some yellow. Um, if you need to use all white, go for it. Uh, you can use all white. If you need to let your paint dry before you do this stuff, go for it. That works too. Um, that's very, that's very important step. But I, I've added a little highlight. I'll probably come back and redo that a little bit later. Um, so I do think I might need to let my paint dry a bit. Um, and we're going to start to texture this moon with light at the top and dark at the bottom. And I kind of like adding a little extra paint, letting it be 3D from itself. All right, so I'm making sure to use just white on this very edge, and I'm making a half circle halfway around my my little circle here, my moon, and I'm making a half circle with that white highlight, making it look really bright at that edge, really 3D that way, texturing it off into the center of the moon so it looks like it's part of the moon. Trying to keep my line very stable as we go around that edge so it looks really circular. All 
Alrighty, so I have run out of my white paint, which is great um, and fine, and I can just go and replace that. So I'm going to replace my paint. If you find yourself running out of paint at any time, make sure you replace it. All right, how are we doing, everyone? Can you give me a thumbs up if you're doing well? Yeah? All righty. So I am going in with that small brush again, making sure that it's cleaned off before I put in the new color. Um, I've got my white highlight on. Um, I might go back and, and dab that up, fix that, making sure it looks like a semicircle. It's only going half around the moon um, but once you've got that then we can do the shadow so highlight and then you're going to go in with a little bit a teensy 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 tiny bit of, of red or if you have orange just use orange um, but I'm using a little tiny bit of red and a little tiny bit of yellow um, and I'm mixing it together into a darker yellow color um, and that's going to be our shadow. If you need to reinforce it with white, that's okay. Make sure you're mixing that yellow and, and red just enough so that it looks like a little orange shadow, like a little gold shadow. Um, so really not a lot um, of color needed, but just enough. So very little bit. I'm going to use my small brush, and I'm going to make little uh, half circles, little like shell shapes at the bottom, going halfway up my canvas or I mean halfway up my moon shape the way that I did with the highlight only on the opposite end. It's gonna look like it's wearing chain nail. I'm just dotting that on there, making sure to leave as much texture. Um, as I can because I think that looks really cool um, and it makes it look really realistic and pockmarked like the real moon. Um, adding a little tiny bit more red to my yellow when I get to the bottom edge so that I can do this line. So I'm going to pull out at the bottom so it looks really like a shadow. I'm going to texture that into the rest of my moon, so it, it only looks straight. It only looks um, like a line on the bottom. That it looks like it fades into my moon on the top, making sure that texture is there with that slight orange shape shade that we have going. Now, if you're like me and every time you get close to the edge, the moon gets a little bigger, don't worry. Um, just make sure that the bottom edge that you're you're uh, pulling out is is smooth and it won't look like anything's changed. Uh, and making sure to make it a little bit more red at the bottom than at the top so that it fades into that yellow in the middle and makes it look perfectly round. 
and you can see adding a little bit of red to my color right at this uh, at the bottom of the my moon uh, little mark here, so that texture gets a little darker. Alrighty, that is quite a texture I put on this moon. And as you can see, it's only a half circle. Mine's really dramatic. Maybe it's like an orange moon. Um, but there you go. You can you can look and I've got it all close up for you. There you go. Looks just like that. So I've got a nice fine texture on it. You can kind of see the three D elements of that. Um, and it makes it look really circular. And if you need to go back and add some white on the top, make it look like a highlight, or mix in some spots where it looks a little too red or a little too white, make sure it, it looks like it's one object. So for that, do that. I've got my small brush that I'm using to make little circular shapes with my paint. Mixing together whatever color I need to fix things up, make them look like they go together. Kind of spreading those colors together, make them look like they belong. Anything you think you see that needs fixing, go ahead and do that. We add some white at the top to make it look really, really bright, or some red at the bottom to make it look really, really dark so that that contrast is really strong and it looks like a round object. So right, like I said, we're, we're really building a shape here, um, like an actual moon. That's our goal. Making sure that those colors come together in the center. Alrighty, I think that my moon is pretty well textured, so I'm going to let that dry and move on to the next step. If you're at a different point than me, don't worry about it. Um, you can take as long as you want on the moon, um, but I'm going to move on um, as soon as I stop fixing things. <laughs> so I'm going to wash my brush off in the water, leave it there, and dump my uh, my moon, um, and then. Uh, wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm going to use my small brush for this next step, but I'm not going to use the part of the brush that we normally use. Um, this is a fun little uh, trick that we at Sipping Painting have created, or found, um, and we like to use it for this next step because it makes things really easy and fun, which is always a good time. We love when painting is fun. So, right. Um, so um, the next step that we have to do is the stars. If you're ready for the stars, um, follow along with me. If not, this is really easy stuff. I promise if you miss it, it won't be a big issue because um, this is really fun stuff. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to take the back end of your small brush, and this back end is what we're going to use to make our stars. So you're just going to dip it in your yellow or white. I like white. You can mix the two if you like that better. Um, I'm going to mix it in a small amount of that, and we're just going to dot it on our canvas. The stars will vary in size as much um, paint as you have on the back of yours and how many times you dotted it. So you will have to reload after a while. Um, but we're, the point is just to keep it as random as possible. Um, really spread out your big stars from your small stars. Um, you can you want to make them as random as you can because that is how nature works. Nature is considerably more random than we like to think. Uh, and symmetry is often very unnatural to the um, human eye because we don't expect it. Um, so keep your star patterns random. If you want to make bigger stars, maybe you did what I did and made a slight mistake. You can just round out that shape. That's perfectly fine. There you go. You got a big star down there. Um, maybe it's a planet. What's your favorite planet? Venus, Saturn, of course. 
Mars? If you made your moon uh, red enough, then it might be Mars. Yeah. All right, I'm making stars all over my canvas, making sure to fill it in. Um, but I'm using a light touch some places and a, and a cover touch other places, adding paint when I need it, keeping my, my stars in little groups together and sometimes in no groups at all so that it's really random. I think that is a lot of stars. Probably going to stop as soon as I find the wheel too because this is really fun to do. Next stars. What do you think? Too many stars? Never. Never too many stars. There are so many stars in the sky and each one of us is made of the dust of which they came. Is that cool? Alrighty. I'm definitely going to stop making stars now. It's just so much fun. I hope you're having fun, as much fun as I am. Um, all right, we're gonna, I'm, I'm done with my star. Um, so now we have a sky, we have a moon, and we have stars. And everything's textured, everything's gorgeous. Um, and we are almost uh, ready to start on our, our little framing tree. Let me know how you're doing. How are we feeling about everything? Any questions got going on? All right, well, let me know if you guys have any questions. You can either unmute yourself and ask them, or you can um, drop them in the chat. In the chat, you might notice something that my assistant, Thea, has added, um, which is my Venmo account, which you can also find up here. Um, we're teaching for tips tonight, so um, your generosity is greatly appreciated in these difficult, difficult times. Um, and I hope I get to bring some joy to your evening tonight. You get to paint something beautiful. So if you really appreciate the class, um, feel free um, um, and welcome to drop off the tip in our um, virtual tip jar. Much appreciated. Um, if you see anything that you need to fix along the way, uh, go ahead and take an opportunity now while you're waiting for paint to dry. Um, otherwise, let the paint dry. It's always a good rule. Um, it's the hardest one to do. I, I, I personally like to work and work and work on my paintings and stuff and then if you don't let it dry, sometimes you make the problem worse. So. Um, also, in terms of your brushes, you've been putting them in the water all this time. If you uh, get to the end of this and you're like, oh, but I don't know what to do with my brushes now, um, fill some water, all you need. And if you get some paint on yourself um, or something fabric, um, if you get paint on fabric, all you need is maybe a little bit of alcohol really at the front, uh, if, you, if you notice it early on. Um, it'll get it out, some uh, rubbing alcohol. Otherwise, just um, uh, soap and water is your best bet. So that's how we clean our brushes at the end of every night. Which we can't do for you. Normally, we love to like clean up after you, clean the bathroom, clean the, uh, the brushes and the water jars. and We can't do that for you, unfortunately. All righty. So how, do you, how are you guys' moons and stars looking? a little bit more round than mine. <laughs> Mine's really dramatic, but a little wonky. All righty. What do you say we move on to the next part? You gotta make sure that your uh, stars are dry. A really good way is to look at your uh, your paint like this. Look at it side on so you can see if it is dry. You'll be able to see by a sheen that is covering the paint. Um, Otherwise, there's another really easy, fun way to do this. You can take your, your canvas, pick it up, being careful not to touch the edges yourself, and um, then it's definitely not right. I, I learned this the fun way.
Alrighty, I think I'm ready for my next step. So I'm kind of waiting for some of my stars to dry. So I'm gonna make sure I'm very slow about this. So this is really, it's really important now to take a full look at your canvas. The most typical part of painting is to take, uh, and honestly, of any work, is to take a step back and look at your work and go, hmm, that's actually way better than I thought it was looking at it from up here, <laughs> right? <laughs> You want to make sure that you are taking a full capacity of your space and looking at it from far away because when people see it up on the wall, they're not going to be looking at it like this, like you are right now. And that's a really good thing to keep in mind. Helps you remember that the things that you don't like about it right now look a lot different from six feet away, which I know a lot about now. Huh? So I'm going to get up, do a little dance, um, and look at my painting from back here. All right, I've taken my dance back. I've done a little loop de loop. I've come back and I've decided that I've actually created a perfectly nice painting. Um, and we're going to uh, make sure we finish it. So, I hope that you guys are, are in a similar place to me. Have you done your star? Yeah, you've done your star? That's the fun part. So next brush stroke we're going to do is one that you kind of need to plan out a bit. Your finished painting might not look exactly like mine, and that's fine. Um, if you want it to look exactly like mine, um, the one up here that I'm using as inspiration, then you're going to want to take a good look at your painting and kind of plan it out in your head, your mind's eye. Um, you can also use uh, like. Um, pencil or something, but I don't like to use pencil on the canvas because it can get you into trouble with paint. Um, so um, I like to take a, a moment and take a look and make sure that everything is where I want it to be. So I see that I've got a branch that's going to come and curve up around here, but it's going to start here. So I know the thickest part is going to be at the bottom, wherever it's going off of the canvas. So that's one here and one here. For our thickest, thickest portions will be here. So I want to make sure I'm leaving enough room for everything. Um, luckily for you, we started with our background and we, we made our moon really small and here it's in the center. So you have plenty of space um, and you're just going to um, make your branches as ever that they come out. It, it's not necessarily important that they come out exactly like the original, um, but it is helpful. Um, so the color you're going to need now is black. However, if you want to use a, a combination of black and brown or, you know, whatever you want, um, go for that. I'm going to use just black, um, and that's going to be black for my branches. I'm going to use a skinny brush, uh, the same one I was using for the stars earlier. That's going to help me to uh, maintain control of my uh, paint as I uh, put it on the canvas, which is really important. So skinny brush, black paint. Um, I'm just getting a little bit on the on the brush, and I'm I'm pulling it out spinning it around so that it covers the whole tip and it makes the tip really um, uh, thin and pointy so we've got our, uh, the top of our brush, right? And then I'm going to find the place on my painting where I want my branch to come through from. So it's going to be right from this bottom corner, that's going to be my first one, so we can make a mark here and mark here, this will be our thickness of my branch. Um, and it might help you, it helps me to go off the edge and kind of paint in that branch so that I know the thickness I have um, before I get on the face of the canvas. Um, black is really kind of hard to work with because once you put it on the canvas, it's hard to get it off. So make sure that you are thinking through everything you're gonna do with it before you do it, it helps out, I promise. Um, we're just using a little bit of black because a little goes a long way. A little black goes a long way. We're gonna keep these motions really natural, um, really fluid, um, and remember that nature is not always straight. Um, in fact, it very rarely is. A lot of the time it has bumps and curves and weird little wiggly lines, and that's fine. So if yours looks a little funny, that's great. So 
So I'm going to fold this line up into a branch, pull it across. As you can see, I'm kind of going over my stars. That's okay. If you want to add more stars later, you can always do that. I'm going to fill them with a little bit of black. You can either do that now or later. I kind of like doing it um, while I'm going, but if you want to outline first, you can do that. That works too. All right, there we go. We've got our first little black line. Now I see that this spurts off a little bit on top here. So I'm going to pull another line up uh, to keep it thick, keep the pressure of my brush on the canvas, and then lift up and pull up um, into another branch. Um, and I like, I'm going to put another branch here. So I've kind of, I've pulled. Uh, keeping the pressure on my my paintbrush down a little bit and lift it up. If you if you press down on your brush, it'll make it thicker, and if you lift up, it'll make it thinner. So here we're going to do a really thin one. So I've, I'm lifting up on my brush, and as you can see, it's a much thinner line. Here we go, really thin branch right there. All right, so those are some branches. Um, if you want to do another one, maybe here, you can do that. Uh, Honestly, wherever you want your branches is fine. I'm just going to follow what's on my painting, on my original painting. Um, but if you put a black marker on your painting, you're like, oh no, that wasn't where that was supposed to be. Don't worry, just put another branch out there. Um, so this one's branching off into uh, space here. So keeping it thick at the base and letting it flick off um, into a thinner branch at the end. Um, that's why I'm using my small brush. And then we're going to pull this line up a little bit, make it curve slightly, um, let it bounce off into a center branch over here. Again, being really conscious of the pressure I'm putting on my paintbrush. Um, make sure that it's going to create a really natural shape that is thicker at the base of the branch and thinner at the top. Alrighty. So now I'm going to pull this branch up. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. So as you can see, the branches are getting thinner and thinner the farther away I'm getting from the base. That's a really good thing to maintain. We can look really realistic. Remember not to go around any stars, just go right through them because this is in the foreground, which means it's in front of the star. Um, you know how stars work. Ooh. And if I see my uh, paint looks like it's uh, leaving little dots um, behind it, then you don't have enough paint on your brush. You can add some water, add some paint. Um, go in and fill that in. Make sure it looks really clean on the edges. All right, so pull this really, I'm, I'm keeping my brush really light now because I'm getting close to the end of my branch. So I'm keeping it extremely light. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like the sample that is a-okay. Mine doesn't even look exactly like the sample and I'm following it. So whatever your hand comes up with, that's okay. Um, again, I'm keeping the base of my branch a little thicker than the top. Um, keep it really natural. So pull this line up, this branch, all the way, curve it. Oh, there we go. Off into the, making sure that it doesn't come fully off there, so it looks like a full branch. There we go. Thicker. There we go. Then you can. See, I've done this entirely with black, um, which is really going to help me um, when I go in and, and fill everything in. It'll look really dark against the background.
that little branch here. Good. So you're saying, I'm going to look creepy. Kind of like, um, what's that movie? Um, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. That's what it reminds me of. So I'm going to um, go in with my next branch, which is curving up around here. Remember, we created a circle shape when we started this. Um, and we're just continuing that sort of shape of these branches. They are creating a sort of circle. So again, I'm going in with just black and I'm reaching those branches out, creating a sort of circular shape, but not not controlling them too much, letting them be really natural. There we go, I've got our kind of curve here. Putting it spread out another branch here, it goes off into the uh, ether. There we go, that branch. You might have noticed I just covered a mistake of mine. If you need to use it to cover your own mistake, that is great. It is fantastic use of your uh, Painting abilities. Well, I'm going to create another branch right here because I think it needs a little bit more on my painting. If you think your painting needs a little bit more somewhere, go ahead and add it. Let me just. And every time I am creating a new branch, I'm making sure to pull it off the edge of my canvas so it's really natural. All right, I think I'm done with my branches themselves, so now I'm going to let those dry. Make sure to wash my my brush off in the uh, water. Um, I'm going to make sure not to go in with my um, other brush and, and fix things. I'm just going to I'm going to leave it to dry, which is the hard part, but you'll be able to tell because you look on the side and you're like, oh, oh, that's still wet. And remember I told you there's other ways to test it. So the next step that we've got is our flowers. Um, this is our, our final step. Uh, well, actually it's not, it's the second final step. Um, and we're going to put in some flowers. If you want to make your flowers purple, make them purple. If you want to make them, oh, let's see, if you want to have green leaves on your on your tree you can make it green or you can have white uh flowers or you could have hmm what flowers what is my favorite flower? and my my friend um has here flowers are purple uh purple flowers and they're both. not lavender like bluebells bluebells and birds blue so so maybe not that so whatever flowers you want to have on yours, I think ours are cherry blossoms. We're going to paint cherry blossoms. Uh, you can you can do whatever flowers you like or whatever leaves you like. Make them fall, fall leaves, make them all creepy like um, corpse bride. Um, whatever you like. So I'm, I'm uh, letting my paint dry, making sure I like everything before I go in with my uh, second and final step. Alrighty, how are we doing with things? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for our final step. Good? Uh, we're almost there, we're almost there. So I, I'm i gonna wait a bit because I'm seeing that my uh, branches are not quite dry yet. Um, the nice thing about paint is that it um, right as soon as you get it on the canvas, so if you, uh, if you started in one corner or, or another, then you'll probably get to start again there. So I'm probably going to be starting my flowers over here because this is going to be the most dry of my paint. That's something helpful to keep in mind. Make sure you don't get your black mixed in with your blossoms. That's really not not a good look. But don't worry if it does happen. You can always go back later, add some white. 
All right, I think I'm, I'm about ready to get started. So I'm going to use my medium-sized brush. I'm going to mix it in water, dab it off, make sure that it's ready to go. Um, and the colors that we're going to be using now, if you're following what I'm doing with the, with the cherry blossoms, are going to be red and white. If you want to do something else, um, you can ask me how to mix the color or um, go for it on your own. Um, but I'm going to use some red and some white. Gotta find a place to mix. There we go. Mix these. There we go. Some white and some red. And you're not going to mix it fully. This is the trick. With this, you're going to mix it into a slightly salmon color, but you're not going to mix it fully because we want that white to peek through. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the uh, the brush onto my canvas in a way that dots it into little blossoms. Um, and as you can see, this is really white, so I, I don't like that quite so much. I'm going to add more red to mine. Um, I'm going to go in and texture it with some red. So here we go. I'm going in just red now and just a tiny bit of white. Um, and I'm going to add some little blossoms up this uh, branch here making sure that there's a variation to my color by making sure that there's more red spots and more white spots in different spaces, right? Got to make sure there's a diversity to the leaves so that they look natural. Do you need to go back and add some white to yours later? That was too. So here you go, that one. White there, white there. If you want to use a smaller brush, that, that's fine. Um, I'm using a bigger brush, that helps me, um, but a smaller brush might help you. All right, there we go. I got my first blossom. Got to make sure it looks really natural. So I'm making sure it's very random. Doesn't really have a rhyme or reason. Um, and there we go. We've got some branch, uh, some blossoms. So that's my first one. Now these can go wherever you want. So if you see a spot that you think is lacking, um, hopefully on a branch, but if not, that's okay. Maybe they're falling, falling down petals. And if you get some. Uh, paint on the middle of your, your page. That's, uh, that's fine. So um, I'm going to add there some blossoms there. I'm going to creep along, add some blossoms coming up here, kind of like um, I'm going in with my just my red to add some texture to these blossoms, kind of polka dotting it, um, going back and forth in kind of zigzag pattern as I go up to a point here. Uh, making sure to mix in some white every once in a while, some pink maybe. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they look exactly like the blossoms that I have or the ones on the sample painting because they're a natural uh, creation and, and who knows what they uh, look like. Ooh, that's a lot of white. Uh, so I'm going to go in, mix these colors in. If you're like me and you found yourself with a lot of paint on your brush, then make sure to dab that off. Uh, I like to circle it around my paint, get some excess color off, go back in and add some more. I'm kind of letting the branches peek through in places, putting some more random blossoms every once in a while. Like, here we go, some blossoms there. I'm going to come here because I see that this is dry, so I'm going to add some of my blossoms up here. Making sure I like to start with the red and go in with the pink later, or you can start with the pink and go in with the red later, whatever you want. Um, but I like creating a little bit of base and then texturing the base. So here's some red. A lot of red. May or may not fall entirely off my canvas. Spreading it out a bit there. I'm going to go back and add some white. And add some blossoms up here. And it's really just keeping it random, keeping it fun, lighthearted, um, like polka dots, which are always lighthearted. So little white petals, white and pink mixed together, really light colors. 
There we go, some random polka dot texturing to my new little flowers. Again, I'm just kind of letting the, the branches peek through, not fully overwhelming them. Um, but there you go, some more uh, petals up there. Let's move up here, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to fold some on uh, my branch up here. There we go, a little light color. So in my brush, find a new darker color, maybe add some pink, some dark pink to my mix. There we go, pulling that up. Maybe even off the page if you want. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to pull this, with this branch a little bit off the page. I want to keep it contained. That, that works too. All right, kind of keeping mine, as you can see, in a kind of cone shape. Uh, I, uh, the natural shape for the flower I'm working with. If yours is a little different, that's fine. So I'm adding some red now. I'm going in with my pink, I'm gonna add some red, a little bit of dark pink to it. There's some dark pink in there. I'm going to go back in with some white. And I'm covering the tip of my my branch a little bit, making sure that it looks like it's disappearing. Highlighting with some white. Kind of looks like a peppermint. Natural, beautiful, really light, and, and um, making sure not to put too much pressure on my brush. Um, I'm going to go over here. I found the next dry branch that is available to me to color with. Um, I start with a really light one over here, so I'm going to add some red to that. Pulling up when I need a smaller dot, I'm putting less pressure on my brush um, in order to get that smaller dot. Um, I think I need some more red here, so I'm going to pull in direct red, dapple that in, little dots, making it very random, very natural, casual. Um, go back with some white and, and pink mixed together. Making sure I, if I need to round out my brush, I can just spin it a little bit, get some excess paint off, um, and flatten it. I'm using my medium sized brush, but if you want to go in with your um, Small brush, that is a-okay. Um, not everyone likes using the same brush, and that's fine. So let's see, I'm going to, I'm go this one has like three little dots. So I'm going to go one, two, three. The way that I did that is I just pressed down. Um, I'm going to go back and add some white to this one. There you go. Um, I just pressed down, let it open up a little bit to make a, a shape like that. It's just a really circular shape. Um, and I'm just pressing down with little polka dots. That's really what I'm doing. So let's see, we've got one, two, three. They got one a little bit more round. Maybe add some red in there. There we go. That's a lot of pink. Um, I'm going to add some white to my brush now. I'm going to start up here. Make my little tiny, tiny little uh, dots up at the top so it looks like it's uh, growing in the direction. So there we go. I've got red and pink and white together. I'm going with some more white over here. I think it needs it. There we go. Fill it in a little bit more. Make it look like it's uh, together and not just floating little uh, pieces in space, right? We've got plenty of stars in here. I don't want to detract from them. I'm going to kind of curve this in and make, it, make it look like it's got a direction it's going. There we go. All right, I'm going to start this next one with a little bit of red. We have some, uh, I'm going to add some extra here. Hope you're enjoying um, the paint because it's almost done. Um, I'm going to come down here and add some more of my uh, flowers. 
they are so pretty and it's adding so much to this painting the pink for me really goes beautifully with my uh with my color palette on here um the blues and the oranges and the yellows i really like it so um i'm glad i went with these uh pink but i would love to see if you chose something different for your flowers All right, I'm going to add some white to this one and go back with some red. Also, I like this branch needs to get covered a little bit. So I'm going to come up here and add a block there. Go with some pink, some red, make it look natural, change it look a little random, which is actually a really good thing. Um, so I'm going to make sure I get the paint off of my brush as need be. Um, Spinning it around, getting some new paint, some new colors on there. And filling them in where I need them. There we go, beautiful. I'm sure your guys look look as beautiful as mine. And in just a bit, um, when I have gotten to a stopping place, and hopefully you've gotten to a stopping place, I'd love to see what you've been doing. We can take a picture. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my blossoms up here. Um, but just keep that in the back of your head for a minute. We're gonna we're gonna find a stopping point, take a picture, um, find our work and we'll be all done. Add a blossom down here. Ooh, I'm getting close. Ooh, that's some pink. Again, I'm I'm just pressing the tip of my brush and really random sort of sort of circular shapes. They're not perfect circles and that's fine. It's not supposed to be. Um, it looks more natural if it's not. I'm going to add some red, some white, and bury up these blossoms. Some more red over here. No, I just make sure it turns into little sparkly circles at the bottom there, right? All right, I think I'm going to add one more blossom here, and I am probably um, done with my painting. Again, if you're at a totally different spot, that is fine. Um, but I would love to see what you're working on, even if it's not done. Um, so in a minute, I'm going to hold up mine, and I'd love to see yours. Now I'm going to uh, take a step back, take a look at my work, see if I want to add any more, but I don't want to overwhelm my composition. So I don't want to add too many flowers in random places because uh, that might be a little much. So here we go. Uh, call this my last one, right? Well, that's the hardest part of being done. All right, but I am done. Um, so I'm going to wash my brush off in the water jar. I'm going to take my smallest brush and I'm going to sign my painting. I'm just using some white because it is a contrasting color for our background. I'm going to find the bottom corner of the painting. And however you would like, I'm going to sign um, with my signature. There we go. Beautiful, son. Beautiful. All right, I'd love to see what you're working on. You ready to hold them up and show me? Yeah? All right. Let's see, let's hold these up, making sure not to get your hands all painty. I'm not doing that, how to take pictures. You uh, hit mm -hmm. both at once. Both at once. Yeah, so let's, let's <laughs> see, let's hold. Um, that is the sound button, and that is the power button. Nope. <laughs> 
as I said before, I often do the um, mine. And um, the home button, which is right there, <laughs> and the power button, which is right there. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, you guys, this looks so great. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed um, your class today tonight. Make sure you sign your painting. Um, if you need some extra time and you're not done, um, that's fine. I'm going to leave mine up for a little bit so you'll have some time. You can also check out the image that is on our website um, if you want to use it as some sort of note um, as you paint. Um, or just, you know, do whatever you want, because painting is fun, and it's individual, and it's creative, and it's, you should enjoy yourself and do whatever you want to do. Um, it's been a pleasure painting with you tonight. My name is Sabrina. Um, my Venmo is in the chat box or right here. Um, I greatly appreciate uh, your generosity, and I'm so glad that you guys joined me tonight. Thank you so much, and thanks for coming and painting with us at Virtual Sipping and Painting.